What's going on guys, my name's Theo Atrix and welcome to my updated level 1 to 99 Hunter Guide. With the addition of Valamore to old school, Jagex introduced the Hunter Guild and 7 new Hunter animals. The fastest pathway to level 99 has slightly changed, where Moss Lizards are now the fastest experience from level 20 until 29, and Embertailed Derboa are now the fastest between 39 and 43. Jagex also introduced a somewhat AF K hunter method for level 51 hunters, and the new Tetsu Salamanders are great experience at higher levels. In this hunter guide, I'm covering everything you'll need to know to reach 99 hunter, covering the fastest pathway, then the alternative and AFK methods. If you want to skip to any section of the guide, you can use the timestamps in the description below. I'm going to do a brief overview of all of the methods I'm showing so that you have an idea of what's available. I'll start with showing you the fastest pathway to 99 Hunter, which includes a range of training methods like hunting birds, salamanders, kebbets, and chinchompers. It takes roughly 75 hours to go from 1 to 99 Hunter with this pathway. After the fastest pathway, I'll cover the alternative training methods, which have their own benefits, but are not the fastest hunter experience. There's the new Tetsu Salamanders, there's Red Chin Chompers, Herbivore, Aerial Fishing, and Driftnet Fishing. After the alternative methods, I'm going to show the AFK methods, and as I mentioned, Pyre Foxes are a new AFK hunter method unlocked at level 51. Maniacal monkeys are great for AFK experience, but they do require monkey madness too. Afterwards, I'll cover birdhouse runs, which are an efficient hunter method if done quickly. Then I'll cover the new hunter rumors, and then Iron Man hunter training. Over the years, Hunter has become less click intensive with Runelight and the addition of herbivores, maniacal monkeys, and more. With this guide, I suggest following the fastest pathway, but do consider the alternative Hunter spots which I'll show soon. The best Hunter spot that I recommend is the Spring Hunt minigame on Raid Shadow Legends. For the first time ever, Raid is giving away real life prizes to players, with gaming consoles and gift cards up for grabs. To enter, you just need to hunt for hidden items around Mistwood. Simply download Raid using my link in the description and head to springhunt.polarium.com and enter your Raid ID to join the hunt. Within the minigame, you can get top tier in-game loot like legendary champions and skill tomes. New and old players can also enter the promo code SPRINGHUNT24 to get free items and silver. Raid is celebrating its growing player base with a special event called Community Weeks. In this, anyone can get their hands on a free legendary champion, Chronicler Adelin. She's a top tier support champion who can put an enemy to sleep without even hitting them. To get Adelin, just log in for 7 days between April 11th and July 8th. There's more rewards though, there's 14 days of rewards in total, including a perfect soul for Adelin. So download Raid now and join the community event. With my link and QR code, you get insane bonuses that are only available through my link. You immediately get a massive starter pack with an epic champion, Tayrel, which many players consider to be one of the best epic champions in the game. With my link, you get another starter pack upon reaching level 25, which includes the epic champion, Rector. All of these champions are available only by downloading through my custom link or QR code. Once you're in, come find me under the name Theoatrix OSRS and you should join my clan Theoatrix. So click the link in the description and I'll see you out on the battlefield. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video. Now let's move on to the fastest pathway, and I'm going to show these methods in order, going from level 1 to 99. These are all of the items you'll need for this pathway. You'll need different types of traps, some teleports, and some potions. So to get started, make your way to Varrock and head northeast to the museum. Head one level downstairs and speak to Orlando Smith to start the natural history quiz. Then the idea is that you need to answer the questions correctly on all of the display cases on this floor. With Runelight, it tells you which answers are correct by default. So you go around clockwise or anti-clockwise, answering the questions for each display case. And once you've completed them all, you return 
return to Orlando Smith and he rewards you with 1000 Hunter and Slayer experience, getting you straight to level 9. Next you'll need a butterfly net, at least 3 hunter potions, 2 bird snares, at least 2 butterfly jars, 4 stamina potions, and a teleport to Piscatorus. The easiest way there is with a Piscatorus teleport scroll, which you can buy straight off the grand exchange. Alternatively, there are some other ways to get there, which I'm showing on the map. Make your way to this part of Piscatorus, near the western fence of the falconry, and set up a bird snare in the darker patch on the map. Next, you wait a little while until a bird is lured over, and you check the trap, then reset it, and wait again. You'll do this until level 12, which is going to take 5 to 10 minutes. At level 12 Hunter, you can boost with a Hunter Potion to catch Ruby Harvest Butterflies. These almost triple your XP rate if you catch them while you hunt birds. The best location to do this is in the area shown, and here there's a number of birds near butterfly spawns. I suggest using Runelight to tag the butterflies with the NPC Indicators plugin. You hold Shift, then right click a butterfly and select Tag All. Then once you're ready, set up a bird snare then take a sip of a hunter potion and a sip of a stamina potion, then click the closest butterfly to catch it. Once caught, you can hold shift and click on the butterfly jar to release the butterfly, and that only works if you have shift drop enabled. Then you continue clicking butterflies and repeat. You'll want to keep an eye out on your bird snare as well, and reset it as soon as it's ready. So this is the fastest way from level 12 to 20 hunter, and will take around 20 minutes to get there. At level 20, Moss Lizards give the fastest XP. These are caught within the Moons of Peril, so you need to complete the Perilous Moons quest to hunt them. If you don't have the stats for the quest, you should continue with Crimson Swift Birds and Butterflies until level 27. The Perilous Moons quest rewards you with 5000 Hunter experience, which will get you from level 20 to 26 Hunter, so you only really have to do Moss Lizards from 26 to 27 Hunter to reach the next goal. But Moss Lizards are actually on par with the next training methods until level 39, so you could continue with these until 39, but I'm including both pathways in this guide in case you don't have the stats for Perilous Moons. For Moss Lizards, you just need one rope, and stamina potions are handy, but if you're an Iron Man, there's a place to replenish your run in the area. Make your way to Perilous Moons, so the fastest way there would be to teleport with a Calcified Moth. Alternatively, the Quetzal Transport can take you to the entrance of Camtorum if you've built the landing site. Once you're in Camtorum, run all the way north to enter the Moons of Peril. When inside, take the northwestern pathway to enter the Earthbound Cavern. Then follow your way around until you reach the Moss Lizard's Hunter area. Once you're here, you firstly set up the traps by clicking on each of the rocks. Then you rustle the nearby bush to send off the Moss Lizards into your traps. Then for the next time you set up the traps, you should follow the 1-3 then 2-4 pattern. Catching these is the fastest experience from when you unlock them although the combat requirement of the quest may be too tough for some accounts. So otherwise, you should just stick to the previous method, birds and butterflies, until level 27. At 27 Hunter, you can complete the Eagle's Peak quest for 2.5k Hunter XP. This quest unlocks box trap hunting and is required for future methods on this pathway. It's a fairly short quest and with the Hunter XP reward, you can go from level 27 to 29, which unlocks the next training method. Down in the description, I've linked Slayer Music's Eagle's Peak quest guide for you to enjoy. At 29, you unlock Swamp Lizards in Mauritania. For these, you need to have completed the Priest in Peril quest. That's a quest that almost every account should complete, so if you haven't done it yet, it's worth doing just for the Swamp Lizards Hunter method. So to catch Swamp Lizards, you'll need at least 3 ropes and small fishing nets, and also bring a bit of food if you're a low level. A fast way to Swamp Lizards is by teleporting to Canifus and running southeast. Alternatively, 
the ALQ Ferry Ring is close by and you run southwest. At level 29 Hunter, you can use two traps at a time. And the best location to do two traps is this area here. This is the order you should follow. You firstly set up both traps, then wait until a trap is triggered by a lizard. If you successfully catch the lizard, you just click on the trap to get your Hunter XP and the lizard. If you fail to catch it, you'll need to firstly pick up your rope and net off the ground, then click to reset up the trap. At level 37 Hunter, you can boost to use three traps at a time with Hunter Potions. So you could do this from 37 to 39 Hunter. Once you reach level 39, you can catch Ember-tailed Jerboa. To access them, you need to complete the Children of the Sun quest to enter Valamor. It's a short and easy quest with low requirements. To catch Jerboa, you need to use Box Traps, which requires the Eagle's Peak quest. You can buy Box Traps off the Grand Exchange, or if you're an Iron Man, the Hunter Shop in Yanil is easily accessible and sells them. So to get started, bring at least 5 Box Traps, then make Make your way east of the Hunter Guild. The fastest way there is with the AJP Fairy Ring, or you can also use a Valamor Teleport and run south. You should also bring a few extra box traps in case you go AFK. At level 39, you can only set up two traps at a time, but as soon as you reach level 40, you can set up three. Once again, you can use Hunter Potions to set up the extra trap before level 40. Without tick manipulation, you should turn off the menu entry swapper plugin to ensure that the check option on the box trap is the left click option. If you want more AFK experience, you can swap check with reset which checks your traps and sets up another one automatically, but at a slower rate. You can also use tick manipulation to set up box traps more quickly. At a low hunter level though, you won't benefit as much from tick manipulation because your catch rate is much slower. So if you want to learn about 3 ticking hunter, I talk all about it in the black chin chompers section. Once you reach level 43, you can partake in the falconry. For this, you'll just need at least 500 coins to be able to hire a falcon to use. The easiest way to the falconry is to use a Piscatorus teleport scroll off the Grand Exchange. Alternatively, you can use the AKQ fairy ring and run east. Once you're here, you firstly talk to Matthias near the entrance and ask if you can have a go with his bird. The idea of the falconry is you set off your bird to catch Kebbets for you, and then you retrieve the bird and claim the hunter experience. If you focus and play actively, you can get decent XP rates here for such a low hunter level. So you'll start with targeting the spotted Kebbets at level 43, and this is the best area to stand in for the fastest experience. It's handy to use Rune Light at the Falconry so that you can tag the right Kebbets. At level 57, you'll continue at the falconry, but you'll switch to dark kebbets for the fastest experience. The process is the same as spotted kebbets, except now this is the best area to stand in since there's two kebbets spawns. At level 60 Hunter, you should move on to Red Salamanders. These are actually unlocked at level 59, but since you can only use 3 traps at 59, the falconry is faster, so you should wait until 60 Hunter or use a Hunter Potion. To catch Salamanders, you need small fishing nets and ropes, and again you should bring a few extra in case you lose some. I would recommend wearing Graceful, because you'll do a fair bit of running around with Red Salamanders. They're located near the the Urania Altar, and an easy way there is to teleport to Castle Wars and run north. The fastest way there is with an Urania Teleport from the Lunar Spellbook, or there is a Spirit Tree close by. This is the best spot to catch them, and at level 60 Hunter, you can use all four traps in this area. You should turn on Shift Drop to release the Salamanders more easily after you catch them, and you should follow the same process as I mentioned for Swamp Lizards. At level 67, the fastest experience is with Black Salamanders. These are located in the wilderness, so you should never bring valuables with you while training at Black Salamanders. And Hardcore Iron Men should try an alternative method or birdhouse runs, which I'll show soon. So to get there, you can teleport with a Burning Amulet or a Ring of Dueling to Ferox. Alternatively, a Karalanga Teleport or the Wilderness Obelisks can take you close by. It's not a super popular PK 
area, mostly because PKers don't usually get any loot here. But you still will need to keep an eye out just to save you from having to come back here and waste time. The process is the same as the other salamanders. You firstly set up all the traps, then wait until one catches one or gets dismantled, then you check the trap or pick up the rope and net, and you click to reset the trap. Overall, you can get up to 125k hunter XP per hour here, which is quite fast. At level 73 Hunter, you unlock the fastest training method in the game, Black Chin Chompers. You need the Eagle's Peak quest to be able to catch them, since they're caught with box traps. These are located in the wilderness, and it's pretty common for PKers to come here. The fastest way to them is with a Revenant Cave Teleport Scroll, which is under 300 coins on the Grand Exchange. Iron Men can get there from a Burning Amulet Teleport, or with the Ring of Dueling Ferox Teleport. Black Chin Chompers are the fastest experience in the game, but can be even faster if you tick trap placement and kill stray chin chompers. You can get up to and over 250k hunter XP per hour. You can set up your traps in most of the hunter areas between the trees but I prefer setting up traps in this area here. You can hunt these without three ticking, and it's the same as Embertail Jaboa, where you can either check or reset the box traps. But for the fastest experience, you should tick trap placement. To three tick, you need items that can start a three tick cycle, and those options are all on the screen now. I recommend using herb and tar, since you can bring grimy herbs with you in case you accidentally finish the action. So to three tick, you should use the menu entry swapper plugin to set the left click option for box traps to reset. Then you wait until a trap has caught a chin chomper, and you go to reset it. And as soon as it disappears, so as soon as you've collected the chin chomper, you start the three three tick action then your character will set up the trap faster than it normally would. So then you can click on the next box trap and repeat the process. This also works when the box trap gets dismantled. So when you reset it, you can three tick to speed it up. Bringing a bow and arrows with you is useful for killing the stray chin chompers. If you have an alt account with membership, you can speed up your training even further so that you can kill while hunting. As soon as a chin chomper spawns, there's a chance that it will target one of your box traps, but if it doesn't, you should kill the stray chin chomper so that it respawns nearby and has another chance of going into your box trap. So that was the fastest pathway, and it takes around 75 hours to reach 99. Now let's move into the alternative training methods, and these methods have their own benefits, they're just not the absolute fastest. With Valamore came a great alternative hunter method, Tetsu Salamanders. These give around 150k XP per hour at 99 hunter, and they're unlocked at level 79. These are the XP rates you can expect from Tetsu Salamanders. As soon as you reach level 80 hunter and you're able to set up 5 traps, your XP rate jumps up to around 110k XP per hour. To catch these, you only need the Children of the Sun quest to enter Valamore. These require small fishing nets and ropes to catch, since they're salamanders. The fastest way there is to take the Quetzal transportation to Cam Torum, which requires the built landing site. Alternatively, you can take the Quetzal to the north, or you can just run west from the main city. These are the trap locations you should use. While hunting here, you get mostly immature salamanders, but at a rare rate, you can get a Tetsu salamander, which you can use for combat or sell for a profit. They're a decent money maker at the moment, since they're selling for over 200k each. At level 80 Hunter, once you can place 5 traps, Red Chin Chompers become a fairly efficient hunter training method. Your XP rates with Red Chin Chompers really depend on whether you use Tick Manipulation to reset your traps. You can get up to 195k XP per hour with Tick Manipulation, or 140k without. Red Chin Chompers are best hunted in Feldip Hills. You can hunt in this region in the Outer World, or you can use the private hunting grounds with the Hard Western Provinces Diary. The entrance to this is located to the south in the Feldip Hills. You can use a Feldip Hills Teleport Scroll off the Grand Exchange to get there the fastest. Alternatively, you can use the AK KS Fairy Ring, or there's a Gnome Glider 
or there's a spirit tree in the Feldip Hills as well. Overall, red chin chompers are particularly useful for iron men, but still provide a fast way to train hunter for regular accounts. An excellent alternative method which is far less click intensive is hunting herbivores. This is done on Fossil Island, so this requires the Bone Voyage quest along with 80 Hunter. The XP rates at Herbivore are higher than Red Chin Chompers, but lower than Black Chin Chompers. You can get up to 170k Hunter XP per hour here at 99. To hunt Herbivores, you don't actually need any items, but Magic Secateurs will yield you an extra herb for every Herbie you catch. A Herb Sack is also very useful here allowing you to store the herbs that you get. By default on Runelight, there's a plugin called Herbivore. This shows the starter objects and the trail of the herbivore, which makes things a lot easier. So to catch herbies, you firstly find a starter object and just click on it. Your player will search it and start a trail, which you can follow to search the next object. You continue searching objects until you reach the end of the trail, where a herbivore will spawn. You can then click on it to harvest the herbs off its back. Overall, this is a less click intensive but still a decently fast way to train Hunter, and I would strongly recommend at least trying it on your journey to level 99. If you're looking to train fishing as well as Hunter, aerial fishing is a decent option. This is done on Mulch Island on Zaya, which has no requirements to access except you do need 35 Hunter and 43 fishing to partake. Your XP rates can reach up to 80k Hunter while getting 60k fishing at the same time. At lower levels, it's still decent, giving 28k Hunter XP per hour when you unlock it. To get started with aerial fishing, talk to Alri the Angler on Mulch Island. They give you a bird, and then you need bait, which you can pick up kingworms on Mulch Island, and then to get more bait, you can use a knife on the fish that you catch. So you make your way to the edges of the island, and click on the fishing spots to send your bird to catch the fish. You repeatedly do this for consistent fishing and hunter experience. Overall though, aerial fishing is not the most efficient training method for hunter, but it can be worth doing if you need to train fishing as well. It's also great for the rewards or to switch up your training. Another alternative method is drift net fishing, and drift netting is a very efficient method in terms of XP rates. You get up to 115k hunter and 87k fishing XP per hour at 99. If you consider that you're getting both of those at the same time, it's actually the most efficient hunter and fishing training method in the game. You need level 44 hunter and 47 fishing to do drift net fishing, and it's located underwater on fossil island, so you need the Bone Voyage quest. You should also get the fishbowl helmet and diving apparatus from the Freeing Pirate Pete subquest of Recipe for Disaster. It's strongly recommended to bring flippers, as well as any type of trident. You can also pay Numulites to send your catches to the bank, so bring some Numulite. For this method, you do need drift nets, which you can buy off the Grand Exchange, or Iron Men can make them with jute fibers. You use about 100 drift nets per hour here. There's an NPC in the area called a net, which you can store drift nets with. So if you're just getting started, bring no to drift nets to give to her, then you can just withdraw them while you train. So from the diving spot on Fossil Island, make your way north into the drift net fishing area. Once inside, you can set up the two drift nets. Then you click on the fish around the area to chase them into the drift nets. Once the net is full, you click it and can set send the fish straight to the bank with Numulite. This is the most efficient hunter and fishing training method in the game, and you can see that from the huge amounts of XP that I'm getting. Overall, I recommend Driftnet fishing if you're looking to efficiently max, but if you're going for 99 hunter the fastest, this is not your best option. There's only two viable hunter training methods that can be considered AFK, and they are Maniacal Monkeys or Pyre Foxes. 
Papaya foxes are unlocked at level 51 and are found on Valamore, so you need the Children of the Sun quest to access them. The AFK intervals at Pia foxes last around 20 to 40 seconds, and the XP rate for foxes only reaches 40k XP per hour at 99. So I would only recommend foxes if you can't complete Monkey Madness 2, because maniacal monkeys are a fair bit faster. Foxes are caught with deadfall traps, so you need logs and a knife to set one up. You should bring along an axe, because there's trees nearby to get an infinite supply of logs. Pyre foxes are located near the Hunter Guild, so the best way there is with a Quetzal whistle from Hunter Rumors. Alternatively, you can take the Quetzal transport system there, or you can use the AJP Ferry Ring. Catching these is simple. You click to set up the trap, and you can only set up one trap at a time at all levels. Then you wait until you catch a fox, and click it to get XP, and then again to reset your trap. So at level 60 Hunter, you unlock the best AFK Hunter method in the game, Maniacal Monkeys. As I mentioned, these require Monkey Madness 2 to catch. Maniacal Monkeys provide around 50k XP per hour when you unlock them, and it scales to over 100k per hour at higher levels. To catch Maniacal Monkeys, you need bananas, and there's a few ways to obtain them. As a main account, you can buy baskets of bananas off the Grand Exchange, and you can bring an inventory of those for the most AFK training. You can also bring along bones to bananas, the spell or the tablets, and since there's bones scattered around the area, you can pick these up for an unlimited banana source. Also, for Maniacal Monkeys, you need a Kruk Monkey Grigri, which you get during Monkey Madness 2, Although, if you've lost it, you can easily get one back from the quest NPC. So to get to Maniacal Monkeys, you make your way to a gnome glider, and the easiest way to one is using a royal seed pod teleport and going to the top of the grand tree. Then you take the glider to Ape Atoll, then run to the hidden trapdoor in the trees. From the ladder, run north to the monkey bars, and then here, you'll need to equip the Kruk Monkey Grigri to go across. Then you run further north and go into the crevice in the wall. Now you're at the Maniacal Monkey Hunter area. And if there's another player here, I would recommend Hopping Worlds, since you get the maximum XP rate if you're training here alone. Then run to the loading bays and mount a gorilla, and you need to be on a gorilla to be able to hunt here. Next, you click on a boulder to set up a trap with a banana. Then you can go AFK for 30 seconds to a minute, and then you click the trap to check it, and click it again to reset it, and then you can go AFK again. Take note, if you're using Bones to Bananas, you do have to run outside of the arena to cast the spell, since your spellbook is hidden when you're wearing a Grigri. Birdhouse runs are a time-based hunter training method, where every 50 minutes you can set up birdhouses to collect birds nests and hunter experience. Birdhouse runs are great for people that enjoy routine-based methods, and these give fairly competitive XP rates if you convert them to an hourly rate. But that's only if you do fast birdhouse runs, and then quickly return to what you were doing previously. You can see that if you do 1 minute 30 runs, your XP rates are quite high when they're hourly. This is how you do a birdhouse run. You'll need four birdhouses, which you can buy off the Grand Exchange, or you can make one with clockwork and logs. You'll also need some seeds, and I recommend hops, flower, or allotment seeds, and you'll need 10 per birdhouse. So then make your way to Fossil Island, and I would suggest teleporting to Fossil Island with a dig site pendant. Then take the mushroom teleport system to the Verdant Valley, and click on the birdhouse hunter spot. Then you use the seeds on it to set it up fully. Then you click on the second spot in Verdant Valley, and do the same thing. Then using the Mush Tree Teleport System, teleport to Mushroom Meadow, and go to the birdhouse spot to the north. Then once you've done that, you run down south towards the swamp to the final birdhouse. Then you can teleport out, and get back to whatever else you were doing. With the release of Valamore, Jagex introduced Hunter Rumors. These are sort of like contracts, where you're assigned a monster to hunt. To do rumors, you need access to the Hunter Guild, which requires 46 Hunter, and the At First Light quest acts as an introduction to the Hunter's Guild. There are four tiers of rumors, ranging from level 46 to 91, 
each giving a different amount of experience and reward value at the end. From rumors, the rewards include the new hunter outfit, which increases your chance of catching a hunter monster, effectively increasing your hunter XP rates. You can also get the Quetzal Whistles from rumors, which teleports players to the hunter's guild. There's also the Quetzal Pet, which is a very rare reward from rumors. Overall, hunter rumors provide very competitive XP rates if you do them efficiently. They're a great way to train as well if you don't like doing the same hunter method over and over again. Rumors allow you to experience a range of different hunter techniques and monsters around the game. So this is a run through of completing a rumor. You start off by going downstairs in the hunter's guild and speak to a guild hunter for a rumor. I then head to the bank upstairs to get the required teleport and items for hunting. Then I make my way to Tetsu salamanders, which are my hunter task. And then I catch these until I receive the salamander claw, which is the unique item needed to complete the hunter rumor. Then I head back to the hunter's guild and return to the guild hunter to complete it. And I'm rewarded with a hunter's loot sack reward. You can block certain rumors by getting the monsters assigned by a low level guild master. And this is key to getting the best XP rates. As an Iron Man, training Hunter is similar to training it on a main account. You can follow the fastest pathway that I showed in this video, except there's a few key differences. Chin Chompers are great to have on an Iron Man for both bossing and training, so consider prioritizing training at red or black Chin Chompers. Herbivore is also excellent on an Iron Man for the source of herbs and decent Hunter experience. Hardcore Iron Men should avoid doing black Salamanders and black Chin Chompers, obviously obviously because of the wilderness, so Tetsu Salamanders are an inviting option for hardcores. Anyways, that's my updated level 1 to 99 hunter guide. If you missed something, all of the timestamps are in the description below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe for more old school content. Be sure to download Raid Shadow Legends using my link, and join the Spring Hunt to get your hands on some real life prizes. Thanks for watching.